Endo meeting, May 29, 2024. Uh, we are bootstrapping uh, a shared understanding of where the pet demon code is and where it's going, where it wishes it was, wishes it were. Mm -hmm. Subjunctive. Sorry. Uh, Chip, please. Struggling to, 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 to free the program, which is trying to get out. Um, yes. So, so, um, a lot of this is, is, is about building up my own mental model of what's actually going on in endodamon. And, um, and so as, as the same, I think the same caveat applies as the previous conversation we had on this, um, which is. My, my 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 favored formulation from Phil Salen, which is the problem with being confused, is that well, first of all, you're confused, um, and so not knowing entirely what questions to ask, it's going to be a little bit disorganized. So one of the things that um, Eric tagged me for, which has been quite helpful. Uh, is going through the list of all of the various CLI commands in Endodemon, <clears throat> in the Endodemon CLI, uh, and uh, places where you could specify the name of a thing as one of the command parameters to instead allow you to be able to specify a dot separated path to the thing. And I actually. Um, done a bunch of those um, and uh, um, it's a little bit of sort of cargo cult programming in the sense of seeing how it was done over here and so do the same thing over there and lo and behold it worked and uh, lots of uh, lots of thrashing around to attempt to conjure into existence a state of a set of demons such that there's a a uh, a, a context in which you could actually exercise some of these commands and have them do something, um, have, it, have it be meaningful to want to use a path name as a parameter to one of these commands because if there's actually a path leading to some thing somewhere. I've kind of done that. Um, but in the course of doing this, there were uh, quite a few commands in which it was pretty straightforward. It was just basically, a, 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 a you know, in the place where it was expecting a name, you know, take this string and feed it to the path name parser and get back the whatever comes back from that and use that instead, and it all worked right. And that that change has been uh, merged in for several commands. But then there were several others where when I tried to do the same thing, it blew up with weird complaints who uh, that I that I would have to we'd have to actually sit down and try to reconstruct what I did because this was like a week and a half ago um uh with things blowing up somewhere in the uh in the marshalling system and what that suggests to me was I don't understand what this is what 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 is going on here is that it was clearly attempting to tra in the course of doing this to transmit something from somewhere to somewhere else for reasons that I don't quite understand and failing. Um, and um, um, what I realized as I was trying to puzzle out what was going on is I'm not sure I have a good mental model of what's going on when you're, when you're following one of these path names. My, my understanding was you have a name which is a pet name, which is sort of scoped locally to a given daemon. And it, it names a thing. And then when you have a, something, uh, you know, a path that follows from that, what you're saying is kind of like the Horton's, Horton example of, you know, Fred's Bob's George, um, where, you know, your name for the, the the thing that I know as this that he knows as that that they know as as as, as this other name, um, and you know, kind of walking through different name scopes. But what I realized is 
on what basis what basis do I have for knowing what some other entities pet names for things are and um, um, and, and why should I be able to 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 use those names even indirectly um, um, because they're they're explicitly intended to be locally scoped to whoever it is that's it's giving those names to things and it's kind of sort of by definition, none of anybody else's business what those are. And so what are we doing with these path name paths paths here? And in particular, if I'm trying to think let, let me just glance at the uh, the GitHub issue. Um, um, to do um, uh, I forget which is the one that that sort of blew up on me most directly. Um, anyway, that's as I said. The problem with being confused is, first of all, you're confused. So you're not really sure what questions to ask. Great. Okay, I can start with the easy one. Riff on that for a moment. Yeah, uh, the easy one is anything that appears to be a martial error is rarely actually a martial error in the demon. I find that entirely plausible. Yeah, there. These are the um, at the CLI. It's establishing a CAPTP connection to the demon over a domain socket or a Windows named path, depending on whether you made good or bad choices. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah it, which is to say that the real error is not in your castle it's often another castle um and those get logged into either the demon's log or one of the worker logs and you kind of have to follow your way back to the origin um there isn't yet an easy way to debug um uh, yes i i uh I learned this in attempting to follow <laughs> these through. Uh, <clears throat> so, so how is happening. so? How is it that non martial errors end up showing showing up as if they are martial errors? Because they get emitted on the stack of the martialer when you. Um, oh, when, oh! The, when you when you're this is unserializing the error. Yeah, exactly. All errors okay. are observed through the straw that is CAPTP. So. You okay. see the deserialization of a remote error, right? And, and, the, and this is the, so. This is the issue where we need the the um, the error collector mechanism so that we can debug, so we can trace the the unserialized error back to the thrown error. Yes, and that's on my current roadmap to prototype that in the daemon, and it is on the menu for okay. project MetaMask. So, so um, yes, so so. A couple of thoughts here. So, if I'm understanding correctly, what you're saying is, and and I should I should uh, I, I I should have prepared for this meeting by constructing one of the circumstances in which I was having this issue, but it didn't even occur to me that hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna be able to pick Chris's brain about this tomorrow. Um, uh, that the 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 thing that I'm seeing is a failure to be able to describe to me what went wrong after something went wrong on the other end of a connection, as opposed to a failure to be able to tell that remote thing to do whatever it was that it was being asked to do. Yeah, so so, okay. do, so, so the next, that, that's the first question. The, the trick to debugging this is going into the worker state directory and then tailing recursively all of the log files in the workers directory that that's that's probably the easiest way to do okay that that's a <clears throat> excuse me that's a uh, um a technique which did not register on me as being something i did do the thing you you suggested of kind of watching the the directory tree and you know watching as things got added to it and and whatnot um, the main problem with that being that I ended up with enough stuff that that a a single window full of um, stuff that I was watching was not big enough to actually see stuff and see it all, and it so it kind of rolled off the bottom when it was 
differencing them. Um, the um, um, the particular the thing, yeah, the thing that the thing that that seemed like you ought to be able to do. And it sounds like by looking at the log files in all of these particular directories, you were going to get the moral equivalent of, which was if you're just, you know, spitting crap out to the console, well, all of these things are just code that's running in processes on my computer. So it should, they should just all be able to spit stuff out to the console. And there may be uh, ambiguities as to, okay, I got this text, where did it come from? Um, but if the question is not who is messing up, but how did it mess up, that's that's less significant. But it sounds like the um, because the log files are the specific log files of the specific things that are having the issues, that that, that is um, just as good and if not possibly considerably better uh, way of achieving that same effective outcome. Yeah. And in the long term, <clears throat> um, in the long term, we would in the long term, we're going to be able to make it so that the CAPTP marshalers uh, behavior when serializing or deserializing an error is to be tacit to the log and to instead stuff that away in an error aggregator um, such that if you are at the CLI, it'll just present you and uh, it will go off and get the trace ID from the error that it got, and then ask the aggregator for the entire. So it'll, entire it'll just get you a, a, a appropriately annotated copy of the output with labeling as to who it was that was complaining. Complete with, ideally, the pet name paths of all of the workers from the perspective of the user. <clears throat> OK, OK. Um, I'll add, um, in, in my experience with debugging, I think um, most interesting errors uh, show up as martial errors, uh, like the vast majority of them. And uh, I found that, like, in general, if you don't spawn more workers, uh, you just have the main worker. So it's actually easy if you do end of where state uh, and you can navigate your way to the worker, to the sole existing worker log very easily and then all of your console logs uh, that execute inside of that worker will show up in there and hey, uh, uh, er yeah eric let me just make uh, ask the same clarification clarification question when you say show up as martial errors uh you mean that the stack it, the stack shows uh marshall at the you know at the top of the stack uh but the stack is consistent with simply that the error was created by Marshall in the process of unserializing a sent error. Yes. Well, okay. from, 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 from what I see, it was attempting to marshal or unmarshal something and it failed. And okay, that, that, that would be very, that would, okay, th that one I'm very, I would want to know about because uh, that's very different than it's simply unmarshaling a sent error. I, I think that it's very unlikely that that is the case. Which? Uh, I think it's very unlikely that Marshall was failing to unmarshal a thing that was sent by the remote. Um, okay. It's it's much it's much more likely that Mark it, it's it's nearly impossible that it uh, was so, the so, case so, that Mark is interested in. Yeah. So, I could, yeah. So, so because it's nearly impossible, if it happens, it's very interesting. So, uh, Chip. If you see something that you suspect is actually an error by Marshall rather than simply uh, an error constructed by Marshall, con correctly constructed by Marshall, it by because it's unserializing a sent error. Uh, if you see an error by Marshall, uh, please capture all the diagnostics you can and let us know. Okay. Well, I think I think uh, based on this discussion, I'm going to go back and attempt to do the thing that failed last time, and um, and 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 then be in a position to ask um, better questions. Um, um, 
let me let me share a little and, bit. And 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 I'm I am somewhat hampered here because I am attempting to construct to reconstruct specific technical details of a thing I didn't understand when it happened to me a week and a half ago. And since I didn't understand what was happening, I didn't have a good mental model. So it's hard for me to reconstruct a description of it. And uh, um, and I think the the correct approach is to simply just attempt to do it again um, and, and presumably stub my toe in the same way. And then I will actually have a concrete example of it. I say, hey, Chris, here's what I'm doing. You know, and do a screen share and and and, and interactively walk through it. Yeah, uh, something that might help everyone involved is if you were to take on implementing the command endo log pet name of worker, which would involve looking up the identifier, uh, finding the identifier of the worker, and then looking up the and then computing the path of the log file for that worker and then doing the and then doing what the command line usually does for a log except for that file instead of the uh, instead of the daemon log um and that would make it possible to do endo log all caps main because main is the default worker for the uh for for the the agent so as i i'm, I'm looking at it now Endo log currently just interacts with the the the, mm -hmm. the 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 main one of the yeah one of the things that I am confused about is um, when I'm talking to a a daemon well probably using the terminology wrong here too as well. We've got these various processes that are running. Is each of those a daemon? No. Your... Okay. No. There's what only are, what, are, what are we what are, what's our name for those individual things? Okay. So the CLI is in a process. So every yeah. time you invoke the command that's one process and that's ephemeral to your yeah. user. Yeah. Um it is talking to the daemon process via Unix domain socket or Windows name type depending on whether you were good or evil and right the well the, but depending on whether you're evil or mediocre but yeah right <laughs> right <laughs> good bad and ugly as it were there are three options uh, the, um the uh uh the demon is a supervisor process for an arbitrary number of minions if you will Okay. We call them workers. Workers. Yeah. Okay. So, so. But so, I am tempted every right. day to rename worker.js to mignon.js. I, I, I. Are, wor are workers in VATS one, are minions in VATS one for one? Uh, approximately, yeah. They're VATish. Yeah, they're VATI. It, is in uh, what way are they not vats? Are they vats? Remind me what a vat is when you ask that question. Define okay. that. Okay, uh, th th that's have a nice clear definition. Um, the uh, a a vat uh, is a um, single thread of control. Um, you know, it, it's um, there's no internal concurrency within a vat. Um, the uh, a vat you know pro, pro, um, has a queue and receives receives asynchronous messages and sends asynchronous messages, and the key defining characteristic as to whether you just have separate processes or you have vats is that vats are only asynchronously coupled to each other. All of these criteria are met by. Okay, so these are vats. Can we call them vats? No. Um, <laughs> so, so I, okay, I, thanks, I think, for, thanks for being clear. I can, I can, <laughs> I can perhaps anticipate Chris's uh, objection, um, possibly incorrectly, by analogy to swing set. 
um, and how some stuff works in swing set, which was swing set has vats, um, but it has at this point three, perhaps more than three, but three is in terms of the code that's actually maintained forms of that. Um, um, they're local vats, um, XSnap vats, and node subprocess vats. Node subprocess vats and XSnap vats have independent Unix processes associated with them and are interacted with uh, remotely. Uh, local vats are run in the same process with the kernel and are relying on um, you know, the usual JavaScript um, uh, uh, scoping rules and, and OCAP principles for isolation. So they're, they're isolated strictly as software entities. Um, and the, the, the orchestration of messaging between VATs is all handled by the kernel and the kernel can deliver a message to a VAT. Um, and it delivers it to a local VAT essentially via a function call, and it delivers it to a, uh, a VAT that runs in its own process by sending it a communication over a, a pipe. Uh, so or, all of these uh, domain so, Yeah. So so the, this the semantics as seen by the code in the VAT talking to code in other VATs seems like it's essentially the same it, concurrency it is, semantics across all three of these. Yes, it is not it, it is not essentially the same. It is literally the same as in the 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 code which is running in the VAT is completely unaware of and in fact I hope incapable of being aware of which of these three possible cases it might be in. Okay. So all so all of these are VATs. They're all VATs, but in the case of the excess and node subprocess things, they're they're being executed in separate processes. And I believe the workers that, that uh, Chris is talking about are also separate processes. And it is sometimes helpful to, to speak of the process as opposed to the VAT that the process contains. Uh, so, okay, so, um, Chip so Chris, Chip introduced that by, let me see if I can anticipate Chris's objection. How do you do? Uh, Chip described very good reasons that are not mine. <laughs> um, uh, so so uh, calling workers, de the, the workers as opposed to the demon process, VATS, is not central to the distinction between the demon and the worker. In fact, it isn't central to the distinction between the command line process, the daemon, or any of the workers. They are all, they all meet the criteria of being called a VAT. They all communicate asynchronously and have no internal parallelism or shared memory. Oh, um, okay. the, they are all they are all VATs. <laughs> okay. They so all the have and every and every one of those VATs has a single realm. And within that realm, sometimes there are multiple compartments. Okay, um, so so the reason for the worker terminology or the minion terminology is to distinguish one kind of VAT from other kinds of VATs. Yes, so, um, but that's also not my reason. I don't want to call them VATs <laughs> because I do not wish to take on the responsibility. It's, 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 no, it's this. It's that VAT is precise but does not communicate is the most mostly the reason I don't want to call them VATs. Um, that if I am documenting the demon and how it works, it, I would prefer not to derail a conversation, uh, what which could otherwise be communicated that is totally irrelevant to the name VAT and turn that into a conversation about what is a VAT. Uh, um, but th those of us who are, who are familiar with the concept of VAT and have organized our world around VATs for, for a decade or two, um, um, immediately gravitate towards using that terminology. Yeah, and I understand that, but my my task is mm -hmm. to embrace the sixteen million JavaScript developers, not the ten. Gotcha. So, so the 
so to so to 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 translate a bit then the daemon vat is a, is sort of the boss vat yes and the workers are the minion vats um who are do do what the boss vat tells them to do or 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 perhaps do what other worker vats tell them to do depending um but sort of the, the the daemon is sort of the root of the tree in in terms yeah. of kicking things off, and then the CLI vat is an ephemeral vat that comes into existence, sends something off to the daemon vat, and 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 then dies like a mayfly. Yes. Do you have do you have a misspelling of minion that goes with the misspelling of demon? Look in chat, Mark. Look in chat. Dame, demon is to minion as daemon is to mignon. Oh, um, right, 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 right. Oh, I forgot God. about that. I knew that. Yes. Okay, good. So fillet, has, fillet has to be fit into this taxonomy. Somewhere. I, I will I will forward you the relevant material, Chip. It, it just so happens that I had a lengthy conversation about this with my fat friend group <laughs> where, where they even made a better comparisons and went much farther <laughs> oh my oh my uh oh it was no they, it, oh, no 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 my friend my friend observed that a demon flays minions but a de a demon flays minions and a demon fillets mignon which almost works all three words are cognate respectively both all of them borrowed Three the, the the former are borrowed from Latin, the latter are all borrowed indirectly via French. <laughs> so is there is there a sauce bernays and a sauce a poivre and almost certainly. Right? I have to look. <laughs> almost certainly. But in any case, this is why I'm tempted every day to go and rename worker.js to mignon.js with the G. Um but so far. I, 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 you, you spoke of of your audience being the 17 million javascript developers yes right right there may be a certain amount of undermining your own mission here going on yes exactly <laughs> which is why it's daemon.js and worker.js which are which are words that this the millions are going to be able to understand okay so i think i think okay so that 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 is that is helpful. Um, another place I got in trouble, um, and this is once again, I think, a consequence of not having a clear mental model of, of how all these pieces fit together. And what you describe, what, you, what you've just gone through actually is, is, is helpful in clarifying that mental model. But, um, the um, example documentation that you have that 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 dot md file that that goes through you know here are some things to try and doing these things and kind of working through it and there's the uh, the counter example um, and thank you Mark but by, by the way I I, I I have a knit to pick with the um, the the counter example. It, the description says, this is a worker caplet or worklet that counts numbers. Um, it, it does not count numbers. As far as I can tell, there are two numbers in this and th that's all the numbers there are. So it counts. <laughs> it counts, but it doesn't count numbers. Right, right. counts with numbers. Pull requests accepted, Chip. <laughs> Um, so counts. so so anyway, I I I um I I started uh, kind of making making a, a my own example of a different thing um, that would be you know an arbitrary worker that did it did, did some other other thing and I don't and it was something simpler and dumber like just like it. Rochambeau. No, no, not that complicated. <laughs> um, 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 
I, I, I have this, I have this uh, kind of scratch example that I keep noodling on, um, which is, is named Zot in, 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 uh, as an homage to Norm Hardy. Uh, and uh, um, and what it does... Versus Superman. No, no. Norm, Norm had this tendency to use Zot the way a lot of us use Foo. Oh, just, Zot. Zot. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, um, and and uh, um, and what it does varies from moment to moment depending on what I'm attempting to try, um, and it is sadly lacking in in keeping track of its own history. Um, but anyway, uh, the idea was it was a thing, and you would send it a message, and it would do something. And uh, it looked to me like it completely paralleled the counter example except that when I did it, it didn't work. And um, once again, this was, this is, this, this dates back to more than a week ago, shortly prior to your, your um, departure for your, your adventure in the, in the wilderness. And uh, um, um, once again, I need to, I need to actually reconstruct what went wrong there so that I can ask coherent questions about it. So, so but, in the absence of a concrete example, I want to um, provide some hints about likely causes for what appeared to be a martial error when you were doing the pet name to pet path upgrade for some commands. Um, the CLI, it is a convention of the user interface to the daemon that pet name paths are dot delimited it is not <laughs> yes it is not a convention of the demon itself the demon does is not aware of any particular delimiter for pet yeah. name paths mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and uh and i think that this is a good boundary for the abstraction especially taking into account that the web user interface isn't going might use another mechanism well what the, the 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 little path parser utility function does is it just splits the string the thing on periods and mm -hmm. gives you back an array of names um and then the then lookup is is handed this array and it com comes back with something um and um that is there anything, is there anything that prevents the uh, so presumably there's there's other api where you can just provide an array and other API, which might go from an array to a dotted path by joining on dot. And that, the question... that would be that would be output generation. I think we're okay. prior to that. Okay, so uh, just uh, so a caution. I just want to inject immediately is: is there anything that prevents the occurrence of a dot in a, a component name? The daemon currently limits uh, pet names to being kebab case and lower lowercase and lowercase and hyphen and numbers. Um, this okay. is a limitation that we don't like, but I also prefer for now not to engage with the problem of escaping. Um, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the the components of a dot delimited path are currently limited to either kebab case or all uppercase or or all uppercase, all uppercases by convention. Um, reserved for special, non deletable names in a name hub. Um, oh, things that are part of the infrastructure of the system in some sense, as opposed to. The, the distinctive, unique functionality of whatever the particular thing is. Yeah, I'm calling them special. It would be just as good to call them indelible. Um, the user interface wouldn't pre present a remove button, ideally. Mm -hmm. Current does, but that's, you know. Uh, uh, we, we probably need to have more than just a convention around this. It might be that we need to change it so that the list method and the list name changes, the follow name changes methods provide the deletability field on the record, but you know, we'll get there. Uh, so, let, me just, let, let me just make sure the, uh, what you said is the component name cannot even include a space, correct? That is correct. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So that's uh. So yeah. So let me let me. Um... Oh, oh, okay. So the, all of that is to say that within the demon, you will find various methods that are. So currently, you've you've done the easy part. All of the CLI methods, for the most yeah. part, that work on operate on lookup, and lookup is a demon method that has been upgraded to handle either a string or an array of strings in the case that it's a path. Right. Or, or actually, no, lookup, we we implemented a Gorex name hub convention for lookup in, or, in, in anticipation of being able to interface with on-chain name hubs. Um, which I don't is even to... know what, by the way, just by way of terminology, what the hell is a name hub? Uh, it's sort of the base of a hierarchy of, it's it's a base protocol. Um, okay. A name hub is an object that implements lookup. Okay. There are other methods. Um, the and so it's kind of like a map, only it takes a it, it you give it a key, which is a, a a path through a tree as opposed to a single layer. Yeah. Okay, um, which is why lookup have... works. Yeah, and I also want to to. Um... Uh, uh, react to Chris's use of the term hierarchy uh, is it's a graph and there's it's a directed graph uh, with the no the 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 edges labeled with the component names. So a pet name path is a path through the graph navigating by the component names. Right, yes. telling you telling nice. you which which branch to take at each at each node. Um, based on whatever the local namespace is at that point. Right. Yeah. The the hierarchy I referred to is not the name hub um graph. It's the inheritance hierarchy of ah. the protocols. Mm -hmm. The okay. there where where name hub is the most primitive and then you get more specialized um that uh a directory is a name hub mm -hmm. that an, an agent is a name hub. Okay, so that was going to be the basis of one of my further questions, yes. which is a directory is okay, and, and name hub itself, a, a name hub is a is a is a is, is a what? Is a worker is a it's a it's an OCAP. It's it's a capability to look up a name and get the corresponding value. I see. I see. Because because um, and this this goes back to the question of whose paths are these anyway? Because um, I could I can I can build a tree structure with Makedir, and I have you know directories within directories and direct, you know just a traditional sort of Unix path thing. But all of that stuff is contained within um, a single process. Whereas if I refer to a, a name which designates, say, an agent someplace else, um, then I presumably, in order to interpret subsequent names in that path, I have to talk to that agent. And if that is, um, um, and, and then this applies recursively, so the next name in the path might designate another agent and he has to go talk to so there's there's a, there's got to be a whole chain of a talks to b talks to c talks to d um with with interprocess messaging in order to resolve that name and then when you reach the end um are we we're getting back a reference to whatever the thing that was designated by that that path um is that is that uh there's first of all that comes back does that come back all the way up the, the return stack or okay that makes sense but this this is a this currently is, current currently right one could imagine it being returned directly to the original requester without all of the intermediary steps right. um so let me let me, <clears throat> but, let but me the, 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 this is leading up to to a question if i if i don't forget it in the course of attempting to ask it. Um, and that is, um, this is presumably, this is a cooperative protocol, which is to say, if I'm asking 
some other agent to resolve the the, 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 the tail. Uh, I strip off the head of a path, which tells me who I'm going to talk to, but then I give them the rest of the path. And then what they do it is entirely their discretion to determine. So if they were to, um, they to, can corrupt. Yes. to do some random thing with that, they could, they could just as well. And the fact that this works at all is a consequence of the fact that each of the intermediaries in this sequence of parties talking to other parties talking to other parties is is abiding by the protocol of this path lookup uh 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 yes subject, and, and, and in the fred in the fred in the fred what was it the fred the or the fred's bob's george yeah in fred's bob's george you are trusting bob to represent George. Right. Um, but you don't have to. In in we have aspirations to make it possible to also express um three-party handoff, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, that the name hub protocol isn't just lookup. There are a few other name hub methods that most of these, if not all, implement. Uh, and actually and even, even with lookup the if the original requester just does a singleton lookup and then takes the result and does a singleton lookup on that they can do all of the steps themselves if they want to assuming, um, assuming well in fact in fact that 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 seems like that's important because if you pass the entire tail of the path to the next person down the line they get to inspect the entire path um Prior so to... we we don't do that. We trample okay. in at the first lookup. Okay. Um, but are you doing uh, what Mark just described? Uh, no, we no, we okay. are. Well, wait, we are doing what Mark described, but it does not have the effect Mark was anticipating because we don't have three party handoff at cap TP. Okay, I'm sorry. So who's doing? doing the tra who's doing the trampolining of lookup? I don't understand this. Your your agent is when when you talk to your agent via the command line. The agent itself implements variadic lookup. Are you with by me so sending far? by sending single singleton lookup methods messages yes. to the other name hubs? Yes. Why is it doing? I mean, if if the other name hubs are all supporting multiple step lookup, why are we doing that? Uh, in order to relieve every name hub of the obligation of implementing the full variadic lookup protocol you can every the, every name hub except for your agent hub is obliged to be it is, is may be implemented with a simple lookup method um, a monadic mm -hmm. lookup method a, a singleton lookup method let's let yeah single argument monadic i mean a single the 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 lookup or the 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 path array is a single element array correct well, yeah, it's that's... it's variadic. Lookup is variadic. So, 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 oh. so, it's, so, we're not we're not passing an array. We're passing an arguments array. Oh, we're, I see. we're passing. Weird. So, if I if I say to I, I, Mark weird. for the record, I agree, but that's what Agoric implemented on name hubs. So we're okay. So Agoric I... implemented this on name hubs, but. Some name hubs are variadic and others aren't. And it's, somehow I'm supposed to magically know which kind of name hub I'm talking to. So the, the trick here is that your agent's name hub is going to relieve you of the concern. As long as the, the pet demon's name hub does the does debout, uh, reduces the variadic lookups. So it doesn't matter so... if any of the subsequent name hubs are variadic. So, okay. so th this seems to me this is just a question of parameter passing conventions. I don't think this is a fundamental semantic distinction at all. Uh, no, just that, well, it's just it, the sender and receiver no, have to agree on what the parameter passing convention is in order to make sense. Of yeah, it. yeah, but but the, so the question, the, the reason that this comes up is that if uh, I, I think that Mark suggested that if you trampoline or reduce the variadic to monadic lookup, I think, calls, I think I'm I think I am realizing. That I don't know what the word trampoline means. Uh, it's a flexible thing that you bounce on. 
yes, I, I know <laughs> what an actual trampoline as as the thing you have in your backyard to subject yourself to ridiculous insurance liability issues. <laughs> right. I <understand> that. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yes. I don't understand its use in the context of computer. Computer yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's a pattern. I think I don't remember who introduced it to me, but it's um, Mark. Did you introduce me to trampoline? I, I know that uh, I've seen. Code. I might. I might have introduced you to it, but it's can, certainly. Can someone just tell me what it is? Yes, um, a trampoline is uh, a device where um, instead of um, instead of using recursion over. Um, a sequence of things. Um, a a, tra a trampoline simply simply transforms the concern of um, passing the tail on to the next in a sequence into um, a for loop, effectively. Okay. So, where, so if where, I where if you're I'm making gonna... much shorter hops, right? So if I'm, I, I see. So if I'm going to look up A B C D, um, I could say. To A, look up BCD, uh, and then B would say to C, look up, and so on. Or I could say to A, look up B, and I get B back. And then I say to B, which I got back, look up C, and it gives me back C. And then I take that and I say to C, look up D, and then I get the answer. And and um, I have. I have uh, not recursed through the network. Um, um, I also not revealed um, the the sequence of things I'm going through to to any of the intermediaries, which may have some value. Um, Except so that, that we're currently that... doing this over CAPTP, and the remote agent of B is pipelining is is all of the messages I send to C are being proxied through B. Ah, 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 gotcha, gotcha. So, it, so, it, it, yeah, it, 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 it's because we're not doing it through full CAPTP. We're doing it through a CAPTP that doesn't have three-party handoff. Right. Right. So, 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 right. So when I, when I say to, uh, got it. So when I say to A, look up B, what I get back is a promise for whatever B is, which I send look up C, and that get back gets back a promise for C to which I send look up D, which I get a, back a promise for D. And those promises all get pipelined, and everybody who's participating in the promise pipeline um, sees all the intermediate stuff. Right. Um, okay. That that okay. That that I understand. That makes sense. And that's why this thing about not revealing the path is is not operational here because in fact. Yeah. If they if they chose to try to reconstruct what was going on, they they presumably they could. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 forwarding. three party hand. Yeah, it's three party handoff plus grant matching equality that would make it meaningful to hide the path from intermediaries. And until you have grant matching equality, it's not meaningful. Right. So um, as Mark and I have discussed in the past, it is actually useful to defer the question of whether to reveal or whether to be vulnerable to intermediaries um, to the user. Um, so it is possible that in a future, and that I will propose, that it is possible that I will propose a complication eventually where pet name paths can be either dot or colon delimited, in which case the lookup protocol would be different. Oh my God! So, <laughs> so, so when I um, if 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 instead of doing promise pipelining, so so let me let me let me let me talk walk walk you through a different lookup protocol. Okay. okay. Pet name hubs implement a number of methods. Lookup is the distinguishing method. Right in the way that then is the distinguished method of a promise. Okay. Uh, the they they also implement identify or locate. You will probably shift our feet from identify to locate at some point. Identify gives you the globally unique 
identifier for the pet named entity. What the hell does that mean? Globally unique? Yeah. What... Unique. It, it uh... contains the public key of the node. Or, or what It currently has a node identifier that we wish to be the public key of the node that houses the value or formula. Um, the... Followed by a Swiss num. Followed uh... by a type okay so, so, now we're talking so, specific specifically non-chain endo we're not we're no longer yes. talking about what agoric is doing on chain that's right once you get past the once you get past lookup uh it, it's we're talking about demon lookup is the only thing that we agree upon with the chain so far okay so so when you say uh uh identify or locate you're getting back a um, and you, you, you're getting back something which represents itself as being a public key. So, uh, yeah. it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's allegedly the key of the thing, but you don't know if it's actually, actually is the key of the thing until you do some kind of handshake with the thing and it's able to validate that, yes, it, it has the private key that goes with it. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's just All a, which a jumping, is planned jumping. and not done. Right, so, right, right. Uh, this is this is this motivates having it be called locate rather than identify. Right. Uh it it's okay. Let me just I just you know we're we're out of time, but let me just register. I am profoundly disturbed by this protocol. An object in general should not know its own VAT ID or its own Swiss num. Uh the object does not. The object does not. The pet name, the the name hub is able to identify the things it contains. The and, and name hub that has this method is a powerful capability that should be held closely. Okay, so the 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 issue of whether this is naturally bundled with the name hub or if it's meta level separated in a distinct way is definitely something I want to revisit, but this falls into my general confusion about the demon of not understanding um how the the you know the the pet names and formulas and ocaps are layered with respect to each other because it's different than it was in e and i suspect this is this is a consequence of exactly that difference yes almost certainly i tried to avoid revealing identifiers to the name hub api and that attempt delayed pet mail from working. Pet mail, it turns out, doesn't work without expressing identifiers on the wire or locators, as it were. Okay. So, 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 so disturbed is the right term. And just, I'm not, I, I, since I'm, I'm still not on solid ground with regard to, um, uh, having an organic picture of the whole architecture. Uh, I don't know that, um, I don't yet know what I think about this. I'm, I'm reassured by the fact that Markham is confused about some of this because it makes me feel less bad about being confused. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the, 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 pro the protocol I'm proposing is that um well there are there are two solutions there are two solutions to this problem of um that uh the intermediaries in your pet name path can of can man in the middle of you um there's there we either go all the way to getting cap tp district a full cap tp implementation with three-party handoff underneath this and even that even that has some complications, but would also rest on time of the other solution to the problem, which requires the under the underlying substrate to identify and public key and Swiss num all of the objects in the cap TP layer. Yeah. Um, so the the other the, and comes with garbage collection and retention issues. Uh, so so the reason why we've we've run into a problem doing three-party handoff on chain is because on chain and you know at at the IBC as the 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 underlying transport 
we've got a problem. We don't have the same assumptions that you have that of of st stable VAT IDs that we that we had in E. It sounds like Endo outside the chain and outside of IBC is making those stable VAT ID assumptions. Uh, uh, so why is three-party handoff any harder for Endo Demon than it is for E? It is not harder. It is not harder. It's just harder. Oh, okay. It's just another complication that you have to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's, so it's, and it has the same it has the same difficulties. Garbage collection across cycles between nodes is difficult. Um, might not even be possible to solve. Does not give the user a handle for on for breaking those cycles the way. Okay, so hold, so hold on. Gar does. You already don't solve garbage collection of cycles between two nodes in the absence of three party handoff. So three party right. handoff doesn't make that worse. Is it's already the case that that we can only collect um, distributed non-cyclic garbage, uh, and the how to do that over three-party handoff is a is a solved problem. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I don't think three-party handoff makes GC worse, um, and you know three-party handoff is one that we've done, you know, several times. Starting, you know, if you have a a, a full two-party cap TP to stand on, uh, three-party handoff's not that hard. Yeah, I, 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 I think at this point I know how to do it, but have never done it. Um, Chip, do you, have you ever done three-party handoff? I, 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 I'm the opposite of you. I don't think I know how to do it, but I have done it. <laughs> so, I, I did it once, but it was like 25 years ago. And so... Yeah. Um, it, all of that is gone from my brain. Um, Michael attempted to not do three-party handoff, but to involve the finalization registry in our CAPTP implementation and couldn't make it work, which okay. suggests... So, so um, before we completely run out the clock here, um, so I had, I had in particular two flavors of questions, both of which hinged on... <laughs> <laughs> your cat it's your cat again isn't it <laughs> i no. i i put my hand up like that and it it and it started it's some kind of weird zoom thing anyway uh so i had these two examples of things which went wrong which i have only the vaguest ability to reconstruct since it was a week and a half ago um and so what i think i would like to do is to go back into the code and get myself into the situation where I have those problems again so that I actually have a concrete description of what it was and, and actual like logs of what happened. Right. And, and inevitably, then, inevitably and, my answer is going to be that this method, this method of the pet demon API does not yet recognize pet name paths. And, and that, that may in fact be what it is, but in any case, once I get into the 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 very concrete specific problematic situations and am able to give less hand wavy descriptions of the trouble I got into, um, then I will, I think, post them to uh, Slack um, and 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 allow the the discussion of those to proceed asynchronously. Does that seem like a plausible yeah course yeah, of action? great okay, then i will i will do that probably yeah. this afternoon have some stuff to throw at you yeah. yeah eric could you also take your stack trace and post it to the slack channel so i can respond there uh yes uh do we i th yeah i think for these particular ones it's appropriate to use ocap kernel um i okay. guess hard yeah. hard metamask we can reserve to to keep the noise out of that channel for the folks who are working on endomote. Yes, yes, and no, I think that's exactly right. And uh, uh, one of the exercises that that we're going through in the OCAP kernel team is kind of constructing sort of diagrams of various different systems, each of which implement some, you know, forty to eighty percent of a thing, and then 
being able to line them up side by side and think, okay, which are the pieces we want to steal from here? And which are the pieces we want to steal from there? And how do we get our heads straight about what we actually want to do? And so a big piece of that is being able to actually understand and describe sort of different exemplars of, of, of the sort of OCAPI type system. Um, I, 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 of course, can can do a very clear job of that with respect to the swing set uh, system, since I was you know, intimately wrapped up in that for several years, but I am um, substantially at sea with respect to endo, uh, endo daemon, and uh, I will uh, um, hopefully rectify that through slogging through my. Yeah, maybe one day I will do the same for swing set. Uh, yes. Yes. No, the, I'm, I'm in a phase that the, the, there's sort of a learning phase at the beginning of lots of projects, which I refer to as wallowing, which you just kind of in the stuff, doing stuff, and it's kind of vague and undirected, and you're just kind of trying things out, and, mm -hmm. and you don't yet have a really good, complete mental model of what it is, but you're kind of iteratively building up a, a picture of what's going on. And, I think uh, that that's why we arrived at this pet name path project in particular. It allows you to throw the code around and toss it between your hands without and get a, get an yeah. item and, and look at all of it without having to go through the exercise of lifting it up on blocks and changing it yeah. too much at once. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, let's call that a meeting. Okay, excellent. This has been very helpful.